Hey buddy, welcome to Shark Jets, I'm Skidvis. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to randomize your prefabs in Unity so that your levels don't look so bland when you're using Houdini and the Wang tiles. Uh, but before we get into that, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so that I can keep making these videos for you. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop uh, I've got this little uh, cat map that I've uh, converted from an icon that I found on the internet. Um, but as you can see, we're using the standard uh, technique we've been using in this series where the unused space needs to be filled in in black, uh, the outline or the walls need to be in white, and the walkable areas are in this weird bluish green color. So we're doing that again. So this little 32 by 32 image is gonna be the basis of our map. Uh, when we load it into Houdini, of course, it's gonna be flipped the other way around. We know this from the other videos. So let's go pull this into Houdini and go ahead and start with that. So we've got a new Houdini uh, project here and we'll just drop in a geo, not a get, but a geo as we do. And then we'll jump into that and we will put in our WFC initializer. So we've got the WFC init grid, which gives us this nice little grid. As we've discussed before, the Z is in the opposite place as it needs to be in uh, Unity. So we just need to rot this, rotate this around this way so the Z is facing towards the back. We'll come up here and go to from texture and find that cat image, which is on my desktop. And there it is, as you can see, it flips it around. All right, so uh, the first thing we wanna do is break these colors into groups and we'll do that with the partition. Great, we'll set this to points because we wanna modify the points. Uh, and then we'll add our rule here that we've covered before. So I'll just go ahead and paste that in. If you don't know what this is, I suggest you go watch my previous video where I explained this. It's basically creating groups for all the different colors that are in there. Uh, we have three colors. We have black, white, and this blue. So this should create three groups for us based on that. So if we click on this partition now and then go to the geometry spreadsheet and scroll over to the right, you'll see there's three different groups. One for 000, which is black, one for 5664, which is the weird blue, I guess, uh, and one for white. So that is working as expected. Uh, the next thing we wanna put in is the decoder for the Wang tiles. So we'll pick the Lang Labs Wang Tiles Decoder and bring that into that. And then we'll come in here and we wanna make sure this matches our image. Our image is 32 by 32, so we'll change this to 32 by 32. We'll click on keep, keep Colors and... All right, the next thing we wanna do is uh, do a blast to get rid of any of the black area. So we will drop a blast node down here and we will pick the group to be CD000, which is the black ones. So now the black ones are gone. Um, and then we will uh, bring in a sample, the Wang tile sample, which we're, like, we're gonna need to turn this into uh, the Wang directional pieces. So we'll come in here and type in Wang again, pick the sample, drop that here. We don't have to change anything on this one. The next thing we're gonna need is a copy to points. And then we will bring in this blast to this wang and boom. We almost have it, right? We have something that matches our image, but it isn't using the wang tiles because we haven't specified the piece name. So up here we pick the piece attribute and change this from variant to name. And then also make sure to pack an instance. 
And now you can see that it shows us all the different Wang pieces that it's using to replace everything. Now this is where uh, we would go ahead and put in the attribute wrangle next. And that's going to let us change these pieces into our Unity assets. So we'll come down here and we will drop in an attribute wrangle. Great. Uh, and then in here we would do a couple things, right? We we know that there's a, a glitch in the system right now where these these floor tiles, these dark ones, the 255 one, is kind of off the ground by 0 0.004 or 0 0.04. Um, so we'll, if you've seen the other videos, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, we're gonna fix that by just setting everything to zero. That's gonna make sure that all these line up on the right place in Unity. So we'll pick an attribute of called P dot Y, and that's gonna get our Y position for every point. Uh, and we're just gonna set that to zero and be done with it. Now, typically what we would do here is we would create an attribute that uh, pulls all of our Unity prefabs. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that and just show you what the difference is here in a second. So let me go ahead and punch that in. Okay, so like we did before in the other video, we're creating a new attribute. That's what the add symbol here means. Um, that's gonna be of type string. So it's just gonna be characters, text characters. Um, and we're calling that attribute Unity Instance because that's what Houdini Engine needs to uh, pull the right assets. And then we gotta give it a path to the assets. Now, you know we have those prefabs, those Wang tiles that I created, and I have them in my assets folder in a folder called viz and a folder called p for the prefabs. Um, and then they're just numbered zero through whatever, 255. And so we're replacing whatever the name of this Wang tile is with that particular number here, and we're pulling that prefab. So um, let's just go on from here and we'll just get it working like normal. So now that that's set up, we just need to add one more thing, which is a dissolve. And make sure to uncheck this remove unused points. And that's just gonna leave us with just the points that we need. So we can get out of here, go up, uh, turn this into a digital asset. Let's call it uh, rando floor. And I'm gonna save it in my typical new Unity project. So let's just save it there. Hit destroy spare parameters, hit apply, accept. All right, now we can go back into Unity. Now, uh, as you know, I have this new Unity project. There's nothing here but a uh, the Houdini engine has been installed, which we covered in a previous video. And I have the game creator so that I have a character that I can uh, control without going through too much work. Okay, so we can see now that I, I clearly put that in the wrong folder, but we can still load that in. Just go to load HDA file and uh, put it at the root instead of putting it in assets, but there it is. So we'll bring that in. And just like that, you can see that we now have that level as a cat and we can go ahead and jump right in and control our little link character. Um, I'm gonna scale this up because it's too small. So let's just ramp that up to two, two, two. That's a little bit better. Um, and it looks nice, but you can see like the ground just is very static looking. There's not a lot of life in this project. So we're gonna go back into Houdini and we're just going to uh, modify how this looks by randomizing uh, the floor, just the specific, the 255. So what I've done in my prefabs folders, I've created another folder called 255, right? So as we've covered before, all of these Wang tiles are just numbered based on the image and the, the Wang tile structure. So this 255 folder I created has three things in it and they're numbered zero, one, and two. Now, if we go in and preview them, 
you can see that this 255, the zero in the 255 folder is just our normal 255 Wang tile. And so are one and two. The only thing I changed was I changed the texture on them. So they have, they're using different textures. You see the zero is using leather grass, one is using marble, and two is using uh, lowercase marble because I don't know how to name things. So, so we have three items in this folder called 0, 1, 2. Um, so we're going to tell it that for the 255 item that it should come into this folder and pick one of these random three items. So we'll do that back in Houdini by going back into that uh, attribute wrangle here. I'm going to give myself more room here just so that you can see what I'm, I'm typing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type that in and uh, then come back and explain it. Okay, so we're back. Um, we've mo modified a couple things. I basically just made an if statement, an if else statement. So the top stays the same, py equals zero, that's gonna ground everything. Uh, and then we're doing an if statement. We're saying, hey, if, if the name attribute is 255, right? It's a string, so we have to put that in the quotes there. So if the name attribute, that's wrong, double equals, um, if the name attribute equals 255, then execute this chunk here. Otherwise, if it's just a regular Wang tile, then do the thing we normally do, which is just set everything's name to whatever its number is. So that's pretty standard. Now up here, what we're doing is we're creating a new variable called index, which is gonna be an integer. It's gonna be a number, right? Because those three items that we have are numbered zero, one, two. So we want it to be an integer, not a float, not anything weird. So in here, we're basically, we're picking a random number. That's what all this stuff says. It's a random integer. Um, this is a, an integer, it's a random number, and it's gonna be from either a zero, a one, or a two. If you had like 16 of them, you would put zero to 16 or whatever. Um, so that's what this line here is doing. So we are creating a random integer from zero to two. And then in the next line, we're doing the same thing, except where we need to specify that new folder, right? Our 255s are in the 255 folder. Um, and then the number that it generated up here, this, this index, um, we're gonna need to pass that, but you can't pass a number into a string. So this I2A function basically just turns a number into a string. Um, so if this is the number zero, it turns it into the character zero as a string. So this is basically going to assign a random uh, integer from zero to two into our path. So it'll pull 255 slash zero dot prefab or zero dot or one dot prefab or something like that. So that's that. That's really all there is to it. And then uh, if you had, like I said, if you had 16 of them, you just do this. Um, if you wanted to do it for a different tile, instead of picking 255, you wanted to change the left wall or whatever, you can change it. You can pick a different number here. You can add multiple if statements here and process individually different uh, different Wang tile nodes uh, in a different way. So now let's go back here and let's save our asset and go back into Unity and just reload our, let's set this back to 111 and then rebuild our map. And then set, set it back up to 222. Two, two. And as you can see, now our floor has some life to it. There's, there's differences in the path. And like I said, you can do this to all the different walls. You can do this to everything if you wanted to just add more life to it. And there you have it, quick and easy, I hope. Um, I've been having a lot of fun using this uh, on my own uh, upcoming game called Robin so far. Uh, it's called Robin. It might change the name at some point, but right now it's called Robin. Um, but it's been a lot of fun, and it's uh, uh, I'm really excited to keep making these videos and show you more as I learn more and put this stuff to use. So uh, if you found this video helpful and useful and you want me to keep making them, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, so that I keep doing it. And if you want to join my Discord or become a Patreon supporter, that would be great too. We can talk about my game. Um, 
that's all for this time. If you have any questions, if you'd like to know how to do any other things, or if you would have done this differently, please make sure to drop me a comment so that I can know more. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. I'm still Skid Vis. Peace out.